Since 2010, Glenn Booth, aka Knowledge, is a producer who has released over 100 EPs since 2010. At a rate of around 10 a year, or nearly one piece a month, this episode will be an introduction and a brief look at some of his projects you might like to dive into, just some of his projects. Booth was gifted a Boss SP303 drum machine from his parents when he was young. He'd often sample the gospel and soul music that he heard on the way to church for 18 years. In school, he took the time to learn the software. Think about that. As a kid in school, he was learning how to use a Boss SP303. That sort of work ethic is what trickled down as he grew older. Alright, enough of the boring pre-story you probably don't care about. What are some of the techniques that he employs on his music? Firstly, his samples have that sound of tape, aka sample rate restrictions, low detail artifacting, as well as warmth and saturation. To get this, you usually have to have a real tape machine and bound the track through it several times and then put it into your door. You can sort of get the same effect by applying tape style saturation to the top of the frequency spectrum. You could do this in Ableton via an effects rack, for example. His mixes are also quite intricate. He makes sure his bass frequencies come from samples that are specifically focused in that spectrum. He doesn't tend to push up the bass frequencies artificially. He also layers a lot of tracks at lower volumes. And furthermore, he acknowledges that most instruments have a very specific frequency band of information where they sound best. If you push up the volume artificially, your mixes sound thin, aka they don't have a lot of depth to them. Muddy mixes are also best corrected by making sure most samples have a low cut to them with a smooth roll off and then making sure that there's space for the kick and sub bass. Scrawberry's Fundraisers Volume 3 EP was his second ever project on his Bandcamp page. It contains a ton of past century movie trivia, over half an hour of minute long jazz samples and claps which are pushed to be lower end heavy. And then also there's drum snares that rattle all over the sound stage. It's got interesting production choices. Around Our Door is a track which starts off soulful for 20 seconds and then cuts to a drum heavy piece for the remainder. He samples Mary J. Blige on Coltrane in and has Who Cares, which was used as the beat for Killuminati on Joey Badass's 1999. The Rap Tapes anthology compiles 26 tracks created between 2011 and 2015 into a curated project where he takes certain samples and merges them to be almost unrecognisable from the originals. The track I Wish expands on his production choices. It starts off quite grand and strong with Easy es verse repeated, and then later on the vocals are pitch shifted upwards, which contrasts strongly with that part. One of my favourite tracks is actually Nobody Likes Me, where 50 Cent is literally fighting against quite a peaceful beat. He also uses a sax sample in the 50 Cent hit remix 21 Questions, where 50's vocals are pitch shifted to be unrecognisable, the main star being the sax sample I mentioned. All we got is a track which is Ernie Isley from the Isley Brothers to be sent to stage with a distorted guitar lead melody. Unconditional has an R&B flavour to it despite being a two-pack rework and Buster sounds quite villainous almost like he's from a vintage cartoon on Steadily. Vocals all tend to have a delay and are distorted heavily as if they're ripped from original cassettes using the method on tape that I mentioned earlier. If you know knowledge, you have to check out Hard Dreams. It's a 26 piece collection of short bursting tracks that seamlessly loop into the next. When I say this is a beat tape essential, I really mean that. I'm going to cover seven tracks briefly. The other 19 will be for you to discover or re-listen to. Shuring starts off with a traditional vocal beat that pulses, and then it goes off into an experimental, almost funk-like piano section for the last part. This track then leads on to the calming flute-led piece called No Flowers. Never Ending features 2000 Beyond by Slum Village from Beat God's Quest Love and Dilla. And that constant hi-hat, it always keeps me feeling paranoid on that track. Take Care of It is another favourite, with that relatively predictable kick, predictable by knowledge's sense, and the amazing trumpet sample right at the forefront. On the track Don't Fall, the constant delay added to the vocals and the irregular drum pattern ironically make you feel like you're eternally waiting for something. And that ridiculous beat switch after a minute into the soul sample with little percussion creates an extremely freeing contrast because the first part is irregular and then the second part is almost freeing. Bodies is insane because of that constantly rising string section with the bass alternating with that kick and then you have that almost evil sounding vocal whisper repeated, repeated, repeated. I'm confident I've never heard of a beat like this before, or most of these beats before. Trash is an experiment of all sorts with the vocals in the distance and the jazz instrumentation samples with the bright percussion. 
it definitely embodies some sort of nocturnal city vibe in three minutes long with a changing upbeat. This is the complete opposite of Trash for sure. Yes Lord is the 19 track collaboration with the main man Anderson Pack. It's an album that has that mixtape feel with knowledge using radio type intros, interludes and transitions in between songs. Anderson Pack's harmonies are worked with beautifully here and seeing as both Booth and Pack's background was in the church, that shouldn't really be a surprise. I'm actually going to diverge from the production analysis for a bit here and do a lyrical analysis of two tracks and leave the rest for you to discover. Scared Money takes a look at gamblers who are basically not willing to gamble. The song basically devolves into him knowing that life is limited and that he has to find a woman to connect to. The line with put that loving on me is confirmation for him that even rejection in the face of his emotions being broken is worth it because it's for his greater good. Khadija was the first wife of the Islamic prophet Muhammad who was herself a highly successful merchant. Pack in this song is constantly looking to God for grace and asking his mother's spirit for strength. Pack also sings about how fame has caused those around him to become overbearing at times. Hexual Ceilings Volume 3 was one of the more simple knowledge albums. And that's saying a lot. It's an R&B filled delight for stars. Overmind features a slightly pitched and slowed down Drake vocal from Over My Dead Body, while Unfoolish by Ashanti feat the Notorious B.I.G. has its vocal melody roughly intact to the point where the original melody by Ashanti is actually audible. I'm personally a huge music soul child fan so hearing Don't Stop in her remix was interesting because Booth's version makes it sound like a club garage slash house track to the point where it has that Kate Trinada style bounce. Music's vocals are also highly unaltered here, albeit slightly pitch shifted. 1988 is the final project I'll skim, it's one where he is constantly showing real appreciation for life, his work process so far, and also appreciation for those who have supported him on his journey so far. Samples generally voice his story, which is a great addition. It's the same way that Dilla used to let the sample speak for him on the album Donuts. I'll say that 1988 has a very different vibe to his previous projects, it's a lot more straightforward. Clean yet complex is what I'd use. The off-kilter drums on Learn aren't too distracting and the road style piano sample leaves plenty of space for the bright synth. If you listen carefully you can hear that repeated bass line propping up the song as the percussion stops. The bright strings of Don't Got Tape with the guitar and vocal sample sort of give you that European holiday calmness. Minding My Business is a long long track by Knowledge of Standards which samples Intimate Friends by the soul group Enchantment. It works so well because it's a subtle message to the audience that Booth just wants to stay in his own lane and keep making music how he wants to. As 1988 demonstrates, Knowledge knows what he's doing. He's continuing the crate digging sample style of his inspirations like Madlib and Dilla and he's making it his own version. There's definitely something for everyone here, from the more experimental early beats to the polish of 1988, I promise you have never heard of some of the sounds that will bless your ears as you listen to his discography.